Hi everybody. I'm at my parents' house this week and a couple weeks ago they were having some problems with their wireless router. Um, it just stopped working altogether after a thunderstorm so I immediately suspected the power supply. Just this little cheapy um, switch mode power adapter here outputs 5 volts at supposedly 1 amp and I have it hooked up to a 5 ohm load and it's actually outputting 6 volts actually let me that's with no load let me put the 5 load on here then it goes down to 5 and a quarter volt so it you know really should be 5 volts and not 5 and a quarter and even if I do plug it in with at 6 volts into the router doesn't the router still doesn't turn on so I'm going to crack open the power supply first and see if there's anything blatantly wrong with that and here it is. I had to hack saw it open and it's pretty darn cheap. It's not really the cheapest I think that could be built but it's close. Let's see if I can get some better light here. There we go. We got the high voltage side here. The transistor is inside this little metal shield that's wrapped around it and Low voltage side is just a diode rectifier and capacitor, and there's no feedback to be found on this board. There's no feedback, there's no opto isolators or anything, so it seems to be just straight out um, hard driven. So I don't know, I've never really haven't measured a lot of switch mode power supplies before. If you can let me know if it's very common for non-regulated cheapies to put out um, plus minus one volt of what they're rated uh, please let me know but anyway that's what it is and I also noticed I also noticed that if I plug in the, the power supply here into the Dynex I don't know if the mic will pick it up but there might be some high frequency buzzing really sounds bad sounds like something's nasty really sounds bad it sounds like something nasty is going to happen inside there okay i have the power supply plugged in and it goes over here to a scope probe to my 2236 and i it's been a few years since i've turned this thing on it's out it's in this shack right here out in the backyard of my parents house subjected to all the heat and humidity and the cold throughout the year and I'm going to turn it on right now and see if it even still works oh there's the beep look at that we're getting something put it on DC I unplug the power supply there it goes hey I guess it's working awesome you put this on AC and uh, really zoom in here there we go there's the high frequency noise go back on DC and it's pretty much on 6 volts which is where I, that's what I was measuring on the scope so I guess I'm going to have to crack open the Dynex then and see if there's anything wrong with that haha <laughs> check this out man you think you get something for your money with two antennas on it but look at this this one is a dummy this one has a coax going up into it. That's the real antenna. This other one is just fake. What a piece of crap. 
but I guess I can't complain since I'm the one who bought this thing in the first place. I bought it at Best Buy many years ago. I don't know, maybe next time I'll spend a little more money and get something better quality. And here's a look at the underside of it. It's got the same white-ish colored residue from the soldering, fluxing, whatever kind of process that they had uh, when they make this thing. The same, same residue that we saw on the, on the bottom of the circuit boards inside the, the uh, DSA 8200. Yeah, the, the, the Tektronix Digital Serial Analyzer on the bottom of the motherboard. There was the same kind of stuff. Look at that. It's a lot of it right here and there. And a big patch of it right there. It's all over the place. A whole bunch right there too. Anyway, some other interesting features of this board is that little metal piece right there. That looks, I guess that's some kind of antenna just sticking out. And there's this big long strip right here with a transformer symbol on it. There's the part number if you want to look it up, and I guess that's a date code either, I guess that would be 2008, ninth week, or is that 8th week of 2009? Don't know. Anyway, on the bottom of it you can see that there's the differential pairs of these traces going up to the Ethernet ports, and they all go down to certain pins of this big long transformer bar here, just for isolation I guess so I'm gonna have a closer look at the the power supply input right here and we'll see if there's anything inherently wrong I haven't seen any blown components there's no fuses that I haven't seen any fuses that could could be blown but of course if there was a blown fuse and it wouldn't be making any high frequency noise in the first place. Alright, so here's the end of the power connector that goes back to the power supply which is not plugged in. I have the wires hooked up to this thing right here. I'll make another video about this thing and I'll put it somewhere here on your video screen. But this is my um, power supply, my unregulated but still very effective um, multi-function DC AC power supply that I built uh, more more than 10 years ago but anyway I'm gonna crank it up now to 5 volts turn it down a little there that's about 5 volts close enough plug it in and we'll see if there's any high frequency noise and I hear it of course there's no here's the LEDs nothing's lighting up so still there's something wrong with this I don't there's the one little 8 pin IC right here that's probably voltage regulation something It's not getting warm. So yeah, I guess that thunderstorm that really must have done something to the to the router here because it's not working at all. Even if I do give it oh, the voltage dropped a little here. Let me turn it back up. Ooh. Ooh, I can really hear it. Not too much current draw. And put it on the 300 milliamp. It's drawing 100 milliamp. The voltage still went down. Now we're at 5 volts and it's still going down. Still, I don't feel anything getting hot here. But I still hear a high frequency noise.
the voltage dropped a little more so I cranked it up a little more and now we're drawing almost a quarter amp and it's very high frequency noise probably around 10 kilohertz or so and the little 8 pin IC let me see if I can read the number on it C A T seven one zero five C A. Second line is P C one one D two seven. As best as I can read. And it's starting to get a little warm, but not too hot. So I think maybe something must be wrong with that. I mean, there's... Anyway, I'm probably not going to bother fixing this thing because my parents already bought a new router and they're using it. Works fine. Well, since I'm not fixing it, I decided I would do a little mini teardown on the little shielded part here just to see what the heck was on the inside of that shield and really nothing special no fancy geometries just a bunch of surface mount just a bunch of weird surface mount parts that I don't care to look up and there's the main processor Broadcom BCM5354 KFBG so and on the back of it here, there's a, I guess that's some kind of memory chip. There's a close look at the residue. But yeah, I mean, given the, but still, you know, it's a good quality surface mount board, you know, half decent quality parts on it. I'm surprised that the the power supply survived the thunderstorm, but this thing did not. Maybe it got some kind of high frequency pulse coming in through the antenna. Not sure. We'll never know. See you next time.